Hi, this is Mahesh Ravi and in this video I wanted to talk about um, how AI or artificial intelligence transformed my workflow, my design workflow in particular. So there are a couple of things that I wanted to talk about but I thought of dividing this into three sections. The first one is content refining. So as a designer, uh, I have to work with a lot of content and one thing that I hate doing is using um, lorem ipsum or dummy text when I'm working with a design. I'm a designer who does a lot of design workouts. So these are not commissioned projects. So these are projects that I do for my own personal growth. So I do a lot of design work and I need a lot of content to drive these design uh, that I do on a daily basis. So I don't want to depend on lorem ipsum and if I do that it it works against the cohesion of the whole design. So if you have an actual content to put into your design, it works really, really well. So this is where AI really helped me. So uh, what I usually use currently um, are two AI tools for my content refinement. One is Apple Intelligence AI writing tools. So um, this is something that I use often and um, it, it's, it's a, it's a no-brainer. It basically, um, when I want to sort of create something where, um, let's say, um, you know, um, proofread content, right? Um, I When I'm writing content and I just need this to be proofread and maybe make it, um, change the tone of the voice or something like that quickly, um, I can use my uh, these writing tools. So if I, um, for instance, if I go and look at something here, there's an article that I wrote um, and I can select this part. I can just go to the writing tools and I can maybe proofread the whole thing. So if there are any grammatic errors or if there are any spelling errors and all that, this will do it really, really fast. So um, there are no changes in here. So I'll just um, try something else. So what if I, I want to make this to maybe um, create key points out of this and I want to learn this. So I can just quickly do that. And I can get some key points if I want to take this and create a carousel uh, of something. So as if I click replace, this will be the, the whole thing that I wrote will be made as capsules of information like this. Um, I use it sometimes just to check, um, you know, uh, the tone of this. So if I um, write, click on rewrite, this is going to give me another version of what I have written. And sometimes I will use this. For content so it basically rewrote the whole thing it added um paragraph break breaks so apart from apple intelligence um i use chat gpt to basically expand upon a thought and um as i told you when i do this lot of design workouts and things like that i might not actually get the time to think and you know um brainstorm a lot of content there so i might have to trust ai to generate that content for me. So I can give in a thought and it can generate keywords that I can use in a video. So what I usually do is I'll just go to ChatGPT and I will just start a conversation like um, the concept of the design, I might actually have it. Um, we need stuff. Um, So I, I basically have a rough idea, which I just you know came up with. Um, and I can just start this thought. I can just give that input to ChatGPT and it expands on that thought. So it gave me a more structured and beautiful um, write-up that I will be able to use it on, um, you know, a poster or maybe um, a video that I'm creating and all that stuff. So, um, Make five from this beautiful. So I wanted that to be summarized into five different things. So maybe I'll be able to create a series of five images or five designs and I can just put these words into it. So this actually makes the process much more fruitful and also it gives you a direction to work on the design rather than going with some something which is a dummy. So you are basically talking to um, the, the tool and 
you are giving all the inputs that you have so the creativity starts with you and you are just giving you know you're just throwing it and then see what bounces back right you're taking whatever you need and you're refining it and using it in your design so it's definitely better than some standard rubbish lorem ipsum text it gives you a lot of you know uh, leverage So the second point here that I want to talk about is asset building. So when I'm working on a design, um, be it any kind of design project, it could be a video that I'm cutting and all that stuff. So what we used to do is we used to hunt for assets, right? The asset foraging was really, really difficult because you had to go to these various sites like Unsplash or Pexels and things like that and download videos or royalty free imagery um, to use it in your design, even for icons and things like that. But with AI, uh, with generative AI, you can create your own assets. Um, so you just need to have inspirations that drives the design language. So one thing that I, I really use it. Um, so for image and video generations, my primary tool currently is Luma Re Dream Machine. So where I can just go in here and I can sort of say that uh, I need to create an image. So I can give... A starting point so I have this vintage imagery um, that I got and I can just say that what I want right so uh, flash photography of a 70s uh, body table for people sitting around candid shot they are all looking at a laptop based on that table. So this is my reference and I just want to create an image like that and I can just click here and I'll just think and create an image which I will be able to use it as an asset. So uh, this basically made my job a lot faster. I can think of an image and you know um, rather than wasting my time hunting for the perfect image and all that I can look for a reference of its style I can take that and I can give it to this uh, machine and it will create the images for me. So I have a lot of interesting images that came out right now. Modify this, I can give more uh, inputs to it. So maybe um, um, and create a low contrast iteration. I'm just modifying that image. Uh, you know, it created a low contrast variant, so which I will be able to take it and use it on a lot of my images. Now, um, this is what I use, and even for video, I use the same thing. I, I usually create a lot of designs, and I would like to present that designs on Mocha. And I, I don't want to use a mock-up that is overused by a lot of people and uh, so it, i i don't really uh, go to these mock-up sites and download stuff and then paste my design in there i used to do that but with ai right now we can create our own mock-ups so I'll, I'll show you an interesting workflow that i use here is to create a style um or you know uh, choose a style that i want to go with and then drive that style with the form that I want. So I will be creating a structure, a basic structure, maybe in a 3D application or Photoshop or something like that. And then I will feed it to the AI tool and say that I want a mock-up designed in this form, in this style, and it'll give me that. And that sort of freedom is really amazing. So let's take a look at how I do this. So for this, I'm going to open Cinema 4D uh, because that will be easier to set up something like that. So let's go to Cinema 4D. So here we are in Cinema 4D right now, and I will just make something very, very simple here, right? So I'm just making a, it can be very, very basic, right? Because it is, this is just going to drive the, um, the structure of your design. Once we have that image, what I usually use is Adobe's Firefly. And um, I can generate the image. So I'm going to just write like two books um, with white color floating in the air. 
tops and mountains in the background isolated gray sky and this is what we're going to do okay so we have these images we can choose any style that we want and um, use this as style reference so this is the style that or maybe this one this is better so i'm going to say that use this a style reference and in composition reference i'm going to upload the render that we just made so we have that render right here and then i can increase this, the strength of it and then click generate so it's going to follow the form that we created and render or create mockups based on the style that we create so we can see some really interesting examples so Um, another AI tool that I use for content generation is 11 Labs. So what I use 11 Labs is for, I, um, I create a lot of, I cut a lot of videos, micro video explorations. And for all of this, I need a lot of voice tracks as well. So um, any other AI voice tool might not be enough for me because um, 11 Labs does it pretty well. This is the best natural sounding AI um, voice generator out there right now. So I can just go here, I can create an instant speed. So all I have to basically do is this and I can just quickly preview this as well. Uh, I can change the character. I can give it um, a lot more stability. I can exaggerate the style. So all of this is possible and I can create voices that I need quickly without being able to narrate it myself or, you know, I don't have to hire a voice artist or anything like that. And I'm able to get really high quality, natural sounding voices just with a click of a button. Another thing that I use Lemon uh, Labs is for uh, when I'm looking for sound effects. So um, again, I don't have to go and look for sound effects from a sound repository. I can create my sound effects as I need it. So for instance, I need to get um, a loud thunder sound with bells ring in the background. So if I'm doing this and if I generate a sound effect, it creates a sound effect that I need. Just like any other image generation tools, uh, it creates sounds. In the quiet hum of fleeting moments, they find each other not bound by time or certainty. Their hearts, delicate yet fierce. Now my third use of um, an AI tool is for research. So I use ChatGPT um, for pretty much every simple research that I have to do um, to, to summarize information, for instance, right? So um, if, if I want to just quickly know what is the content of a book and things like that, uh, before I do um, any sort of design learning or study and things like that, I can do that quickly here. So um, can you summarize um, UX laws? into simple, easy to understand so i'll be able to create these kind of simple capsules out of this um, where i can consume it anytime that i want um, i don't need so much of time to go through the site and understand this but i can just quickly um, consume this sort of content when i'm learning it so for research this is really important this could be about a person as well so Another tool that I use for um, design research is Perplexity AI. Uh, so this basically uh, is for deep research when I have to do some deeper research, scholarly research on something, or if I want to create wikis, um, I might be using this particular tool. Um, for instance, let's say, um, So I'm going to get the entire um, data for this particular research and I'll get a complete wiki where all the um, associations, articles and everything is basically uh, collapsed into that. So it's really, really easy when I am I have more time to study this in detail and all that. I have everything uh, created as a wiki and I can go there and I can study the whole thing in connection, uh, unlike ChatGPT. So it's, it's a really interesting tool for deep research. Uh, another tool that I use is Myro's uh, AI. So if I 
So if you're creating something, um, we are in Miro right now, and if you want to quickly create, do some pre-production to create a basic navigation or a, um, you know, a, a site map, a concept site map of an app that you're working and all that, um, the AI which is inbuilt into Miro creates it, makes it really, really easy. So where you can basically create um, anything that you want here. So it can make a document, it can make an image, it can make a diagram uh, of something that you like. So let's say if I'm gonna go here and I'm say that um, uh, flowchart of a user ordering a pizza uh, from a voice or using voice. From a portable device i'm just going to create a diagram and it's going to give me a diagram which is created completely with ai and it's a start it's a good starting point i can just go here and i can sort of understand how the device uh, is representing uh, you know uh, responding and then accordingly i will be able to change this stuff i, I will be able to make uh, my iterations to it so it always gives a starting point you're never facing any creative block or thought block in this process right now with AI. So it actually makes the, my process flow really efficient. So I hope you got an idea on how AI basically made my workflow as a designer really efficient. I would recommend you to try out these apps, um, rebuild your workflow and be more efficient as a designer. I'll see you with another video soon. Till then, bye.